Hi, I'm Lucy from Sew Essential and I'm here today with a roundup of the patterns, fabrics, tutorials and ideas from the Sewing Bee Series 9, Episode 8, the Fashion Icon Week, also the quarterfinal. So it's getting very, very close to the end now. Competition is certainly hotting up. Can't wait for the semi-final and the final, so excited. But today I'm just going to take you through some ideas of things you could do to sew along with the bees from last night's episode. So the pattern challenge was to create an Audrey Hepburn inspired evening dress. Um, it had some quite challenging parts for the bees. It was a very fitted bodice um, with a fitted sort of pencil skirt that was gathered at the waist. It was lined and it had um, a sort of half moon piece on the back that created almost like a racer back on the back of the dress. Very beautiful, very elegant, very chic. Um, a lot of the bees chose to make it in a satin fabric, which obviously brings its own challenges when you're sewing with satin. I'll try and remember to pop a link to, um, I did a tutorial on top tips for dealing with slippery fabrics, how to get really good results. So I'll pop that below for you. Um, and one of the techniques they tackled as well was the burrito method, which you may or may not heard, have heard of. Um, but for the half moon on the back, um, they use the burrito method, which is when you sort of sew everything everything together and then turn it out um, the right way and I did a really in-depth tutorial on that because not only can you use it on things like the little half moon piece on the back of the dress but it's really useful for things like a shirt yoke if you want to line a shirt yoke if you use the burrito method or a blouse um, you don't then need to do any hand sewing so it's a great technique to learn and although the first time you do it it looks and sounds complicated actually it's really simple once you've got your head around it and my tutorial makes it really simple so I'm going to pop that below for you I had loads of good feedback about that tutorial um, but yeah in terms of the dresses the first um, pattern I want to share with you is Vogue 1692 which I felt was a very similar vibe to the one on the sewing bee. It's a beautifully elegant evening dress, sort of thing I would love to make, probably rarely have the chance to wear, um, but a very fitted bodice, cut away at the armholes, almost like a halter neck, um, cut away at the armholes, a keyhole here, um, very fitted at the waist. I think it's got no, no waist seam though, very um, it's princess seams and one of the princess seams opens into a very sexy thigh high split um, and then on the back of the pattern you've got that racer back design detail which I feel was very similar to the one that the bees made very sexy beautiful dress um, runs up to a size 24 um, and yeah just absolutely gorgeous and this should be uh, the fabrics that are recommended it for it are crepes satin back crepes matte jerseys those sorts of things the fabric I chose I thought let's let's go along the lines that the bees chose they all chose or most of them chose a luxurious satin for a really super sexy feel um, and I chose this mystique John Caldor satin backed um, I think it's a Dutch a lighter weight duchess satin actually um, but yeah it's got a matte side and that high shine side and I thought that would work beautifully to recreate that breakfast at Tiffany's um, style dress I've never actually seen that film I need to see it um, yeah must watch that film but obviously remember the iconic dress who doesn't know it um, but I also picked out the mystique in this beautiful royal blue colour as well you can see the high shine side there and the matte side there and I thought some of the bees actually chose different colours and I thought oh if somebody wanted to do that what a beautiful colour that would be and then there was another breakfast at Tiffany's inspired dress pattern I wanted to share with you which was Birda 6866 and um, when I looked at this dress, I assumed it would be for woven fabrics, but actually it's for stretch fabrics, which is quite nice because it probably means it'd be fairly comfortable. And also I think when you make something with a stretch fabric, it's a little bit more forgiving with the fit as well, which is always nice. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful dress. There's several different options. The option I thought was very breakfast at Tiffany's is a V-neck um, with straps, um, it's got uh, like, almost like a French dart, it looks like coming up from the waist up to the bust, a very fitted sleek silhouette, maxi length skirt, fish darts at the back for shaping, 
Um, and then there's also two other views. There's one that's got a um, high-low hem um, and a crew neck neckline and then princess seams down the front and the back. And I think there's an overlay piece maybe that you can put on there. Oh no, what they've done actually is use the first dress, the one that I was talking about with the V-neck, and then they've um, created an overlay from uh, view B and we'll put that over the original dress, which is quite a nice look. And then also there's a version that has got a sleeve and um, very similar bodice and skirt to view B minus the high-low hem, just a full maxi length skirt. So yeah, a few different views, um, very sexy and elegant again. And view A, I thought made a great breakfast at Tiffany's lookalike. And there was a bit of velvet uh, going around in the sewing bee last night. And this is for stretch fabrics and our stretch velvet by John Caldor. I thought would be perfect. So I've got the classic black colorway here for you. Um, I've made a couple of dresses in this John Caldor velvet and it's absolutely gorgeous. I've got tips on sewing with velvet for you as well if you uh, wanted to see those. Excuse the uh, canvas there falling over in the background. I'll talk to you about that later. Um, there was also a lot of purple velvet around on the sewing bee last night. So I thought I would show you this purple colorway as well. Um, just in case anybody wanted to make something in a colour. We also do the velvet in a red sort of wine, sort of red colour, um, a teal and a navy as well. I think that's all the colours. Um, but yeah, I thought that would work really well for that dress. Um, and then one last dress I just wanted to share with you because it was all about Audrey Hepburn and they sort of showed her relationship with, was it Versace? I can't remember, I think it was Versace. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, or was it on? Armani, one of the great designers of our time. Can't remember which one it was. She had a really close, or was it Givenchy? Sorry, everybody, I cannot remember. Somebody will tell me in the comments, I'm sure. Um, but she developed a lifelong relationship with this designer and she was a fashion icon. There were so many dresses um, that were so famous that Audrey wore, not just the Breakfast at Tiffany's one. So I chose another pattern, Simplicity 9289, which just reminded me of one of the very very famous dresses that she wore. It's a beautiful evening dress again, um, a strapless, very fitted bodice with um, a fitted skirt and then a beautiful overlay over the top. And I thought that you could sew part of that dress up in our gorgeous um, Duchess satin, which is a John Caldor. Um, it's got this beautiful high shine side and then the matte side, and I just love this jade green. I'm sure J Grace Kelly wore a dress in this green that's really famous, or it might have been Joe Wood, Paul Newman's wife, I can't, but one of those Hollywood glamour icons. I always remember having an incredible emerald green evening dress, um, and it just had so much wow factor. I thought I'd share that with you just for an added bit of inspiration. Um, then on to the made to measure challenge, which this week was to tailor a jacket for a man. Um, so a really big challenge, I think, for the bees to undertake in such a limited amount of time, such a lot of work um, to go into making a jacket. And they did really well, um, a really difficult challenge. Um, it was supposed to be a smoking jacket. Um, so people, I think all of the bees went for a tuxedo type jacket um, with the lapels and then some sort of either, some people went for a patch pocket for an easier life, some people went for a welt pocket. Um, but yeah, very sort of uh, glamorous jackets were created. The pattern I thought you could use to create something similar was Simplicity 8899, which is like a classic tuxedo jacket. Great styling on the packet, great use of different fabrics. I'm sure Patrick would love these, particularly the gold one with the uh, black design details um, on the lapel and the pockets. But yeah, um, I thought that would recreate something very similar. And the fabrics that they recommend for that um, were crepes and um, suiting fabrics, obviously satins, that sort of thing. So we have got the satin, we've got that heavier Duchess satin, which you could use. Um, 
and we've also got prestige crepe which you could use which is a lighter weight fabric um, it's not as heavy as some of the suiting fabrics but it would be an option for this sort of thing or if you're going to go to the trouble of making a tuxedo jacket like this you may well want to buy specific suiting fabric and go really high end with it so that was that pattern there's also a version from Vogue of a tuxedo jacket, Vogue 9097, just very classic, simple tuxedo jacket, again with a little handkerchief pocket, um, the same sort of folded back lapel. Um, I think there are options on this one for welt pockets, it looks like, and you also get the trousers with this pattern as well. Um, and the fabrics that they said you could use are stretch woven with that. So I did bring up our Dynasty stretch uh, twill fabric, which I know we've got a customer who makes... Um, they make suits for uh, ballroom dancing out of this fabric so I thought well this would be suitable um, and I thought there were a lot of purple jackets around last night on the same bee so I bought this purpley damsony colourway up um, just as a bit of fun for everybody and then oops it's a bit floppy um, and then we also do that fabric in your classic black as well so I just thought I'd bring those up to show you um, and then finally there was a sort of there were a lot of um, smoking jackets that had a belt around them and I thought oh you might want to make something a bit more casual um, and Simplicity 9692 is a really casual um, easy to sew unisex pattern so you could make it for men or women um, and it's got that sort of folded back lapel detail it's got a waist tie round um, the waist which a lot of the jackets had last night um, just a more casual laid-back look uh, something that probably be quite useful in the cooler months and um, this can be made with a wide range of fabrics so denims cottons corduroys twills um, but also fleece and sherpa and things like that so um, I thought you could make it in our sweatshirt our fleece back sweatshirt fabric and that would probably work really well for that pattern um, but I also just wanted to show you um, that we've also got a really wide range and a really good selection of tailoring um, supplies, tailoring haberdashery and tools. So if you are going to dip your toe in the water with tailoring, um, you know, some of these things can make such a difference to the finish that you get. Um, so we've got this canvas, which fell over in the background earlier when I was talking, um, which is used to add, to create a bit of stiffness and stability um, in different areas on a tailored jacket. Kit. Um, we've got a really wide range of interfacings as well that you can use. Um, we've got bias tape and edge fix tape, um, Visaline products. So these are great for things like the lapel breaks. You can put them on where the lapel folds back on itself and it will give you a neater, crisper finish. Um, the edge fix tapes you can use to create a really sharp finish on the cuffs and on the hem of the jacket. Um, so it's definitely worth mentioning those. I'm going to link all of this below for you. So if you're interested in any of those products um, and the patterns and the fabrics, they'll all be linked below in the description and if you need any advice if you're unsure and you want a bit of help just drop us an email um, but also we do a wide range of shoulder pads as well um, so if you're doing a bit of tailoring and you need shoulder pads we've got a really good range of those um, and then one tool that I think is definitely worth mentioning and even if you're not going to do any tailoring this is one of my favourite sewing tools in my sewing arsenal. It's a tailor's point presser and clapper um, and it's used for the point pressing bit is used for what it, exactly what it says. It's used to get into those corners of things and to help you get a really sharp crisp corner. So. Um, you know, you could use that in ta making a tailored jacket, but I very often use that if I've made a shirt and I want to get right into the corner when I'm pressing the collar. Sometimes on a waistband, you know, you, you want to be able to get into the corner, you just slide it on over the end and press and it enables you to get so much further into that corner than if, you've, if you haven't got anything to put in there. Um, the clapper part is used to hold the steam in. So if you press something, 
you then apply the clapper, you apply some pressure um, and the wood helps to keep that steam in and really sort of amplify the effect of the pressing and get a really neat crisp finish. So again, useful when you're making coats and jackets and things like that, but also just useful sometimes in dressmaking, um, particularly if you're working with really thick fabrics like denim or something like that, it could come in really useful for that. Um, so that's that tool. And then I also wanted to mention that we've got proper tailors, tacking threads as well. We do a yellow one as well. Um, and these are used, you, you, if you've ever seen a tailored jacket being made, you'll see that the tailors use it to mark things on the jacket for placements. Um, you might have done tailors tacks to mark your darts on a top or a dress perhaps. Um, so we have got the proper tacking thread as well. So we've got all the arsenal that you need to have a good old crack at um, tailoring. I think somebody did some piping as well last night. So I'm going to pop a tutorial to that below um, and as I said everything I've mentioned it's all available on our lovely website so do jump on and have a look drop us an email if you have any problems I hope you've enjoyed that today if you like what you see please like and subscribe and don't forget you can sign up for our newsletter below I've popped a link that'll take you directly to sign up to our newsletter for a weekly dose of inspiration straight to your inbox so thanks very much for watching today and I'll look forward to seeing you next time